In this video, we're going to take a look at task filters. So we can access the task filters in a few of the different ribbons here. So within Navigator, you can see we have task and path filter. Within Forder Review, uh, we have task and path filters there. Under Assign Resources at the end, we have our task and path filter. And lastly, in our Plan tab at the end again, we have our filters which is the same as our task and, and path filters. So once we select that, it's going to open up a tab on our left-hand uh, toolbar here. And as you can see, uh, Synchro, it comes with five pre-populated uh, task filters. So the first one here, you'll see the started task. So if I select these ones here that I can see have an... Uh, they've been actualized under the start. We can see here under my task properties, the status started. So now if I want to see all the tasks that are started, I would simply just click on this filter here. And now you can see all the tasks that have been started. As I mentioned, the, they've been actualized for the start date, but have not for the finish date. So similar rate uh, for the finished tasks, if I want to see every task that has been finished, I'd simply just click on the finished task, right? Then it shows me all my tasks that have been completed so far. So our next option down the list is key dates. Uh, key dates you might know as milestones and other uh, scheduling software in Synchro that reference as key dates. Uh, as you can see in the Gantt chart is the key dates are represented by a gray uh, diamond here. After key dates, we have our one and two week look ahead. So once I check these off, you'll see a little bit lower here is I have my general tab. That's going to identify uh, what filters are tasked by. We'll take a look at the rest here in a bit. But you can see that I have my look ahead checked off down here. And then I go to my look ahead tab. This is where I can see my look ahead filters. So right now it is set. Uh, current time data date so it's doing a two week look ahead of the data date I can change this to my focus time and as you can see as I move through uh, my schedule with my focus time it's giving me a look ahead of one week right so obviously if I wanted to make that a two week look ahead I could use my two week and I could even change the number here if I wanted a three week Look ahead, I could change it to 21 days. Again, change my focus time, and now I have a 21-day look ahead. So next, what we want to do is we want to create our own filter, right? So I'm going to go add a task filter here. We can just call it a test filter. So now that we have our uh, test filter created, uh, let's... Uh, pause the video and let's uh, test out the different filters that we just tried. Also, <clears throat> I want everybody to take a look at all the different options of filters uh, at the bottom here. So as you check them off, you'll see the tab will open. You have your different options. Take a quick look at those, get familiar, and then we'll go through each one one by one. All right, so now that you've had a chance to uh, play around with the different filter filters and get more familiar with the bottom filters here. Let's uh, let's take a look at each one one by one. So as you can see, as we have name and ID. Once you check that off, the little tab will open up here. Let's say I want to see every task with the word deck. As you can see with deck, I can see every task that has the word deck in it here. <clears throat> So now let's say I wanted to uh, see all the tasks that don't have the word deck. I would simply just hit the exclude tasks and now you can see uh, none of these tasks have the word deck. So I go back here. I just want to show one more thing real quick is that uh, as you can see as we have our tasks with the word deck, if, but then we have our parent tasks. If I wanted to just see the tasks, I could go to my plan tab, go to my Gantt display options, and I could just change it to activity code, right? Hit apply, okay. Now it's just showing me all my tasks 
with the word deck. Switch this back. So now that we've uh, taken a look at the name ID, I'll just mention here is you can do whole words only, match case, we can use wild cards. Um, so now let's take a look at our task uh, filter. So as you can see here is I don't have anything listed. So now if I went back, uncheck this, is what I can do is I can actually create task filters right from my uh, task list. So let's say I wanted a filter of all my pre-construction. I would select all my tasks. I would then go to filters, create from selected. I can call this pre-con. Okay. So now you can see it's actually created a task filter for us here called pre-con. <clears throat> now when I open up my task, uh, tasks under my task filters, it's going to show me all these uh, tasks that we've created a separate filter for. So now if I go to date range, this is pretty cool. It gives you kind of a more dynamic look at the way you can uh, filter your dates. So if I look from, I can say from a data date, from a focus time, task start date, I can set it to uh, kind of a custom date range, give it the date range, same with my uh, two, I can set it using these as well, right? Now we can take a look at the look ahead, same, uh, same structure as our one and two week, we could create a custom, uh, you know, 21 day, three week if we want it. Next, we'll take a look at status. <clears throat> so a status, again, it's looking off of your uh, task properties, start it, finish, planned. We could create a filter, our own custom filters, based off of the statuses as well. Task type. This is where we can assign a certain type to our task. As you can see here, weather, delay, storm, we can assign those to our tasks and then we can use this to create a filter based on the different uh, types that we've assigned. Then resources, right, is our resource, a 3D object tree. Well, our resource tree, we can build a filter by selecting the different resources that we want to see and the tasks associated to those, right? And then our last resource status. So we'll get into this into uh, more advanced training, but we can assign resource statuses to our tasks and then filter by them, right? Again, risk. This is another one that we'll get into more advanced training is we can assign risk to our tasks and use the filter to uh, filter by uh, the risk assigned to that task. So here, as we're creating our um, our schedule, obviously we were going to assign different companies to different tasks. That's where we'll see all the companies that we create here. We can see those and then we could filter by uh, the companies assigned to the tasks. So then our critical path with this is it gives you the ability to uh, filter by subcritical, uh, skipped or rescheduling without predecessors with predecessors early late uh, so it gives you the ability to filter based on uh, this criteria as well so now our baselines as we're going through and we're creating baselines and then even creating uh, getting our schedule updates and creating those saved uh, scenarios uh, we would have a list of baselines, scenarios, schedule updates here that we can filter by. Um, you can do that as well by just clicking on your different baselines, but it gives you the ability here too. And then with your calendars is depending on how many calendars you have, you may have different companies working different shifts, so you can filter by uh, the calendar as well. And then with activity codes, 
here we don't have any activity activity codes assigned but also we could go and uh, again filter our Gantt chart by our activity codes and use that way as well too right and then user fields here user fields this is uh, more used in 3d um, 3d filters but as you can see here is we do have a, a user field on our task you can create task user fields and then we would be able to fil filter by those again we'll get into that in the more advanced training uh, and then I believe that's pretty much it for the task filters so now that we've gone through all of them uh, feel free to uh, go back take a few minutes and play around uh, with the filters and get yourself more familiar. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.